8 kilohertz wireless. Still kind of unreal to me that we have mice now that are supposed to do this. Question though is, can they actually? Like, you know, it says true 8000 hertz polling on the box. So I thought it's like plug it in, select 8K in the mouse utility and I'm good to go. Stable 8K polling for the sensor and 8K for the buttons. Turns out that's not really the case. It's not that simple and you don't automatically get a guaranteed stable 8K polling for everything all the time. It's a bit of a similar story with this 4kHz MOS. Depending on the hardware and settings you're using, there's a good chance that you're not actually getting the polling rate it says on the box and that you paid for. We're gonna have a look on why that is in a second and I'm also gonna show you how you can get the highest, most stable polling rate from your MOS. But yeah, there still is the question of whether or not that's all even worth it. Like, do higher polling rates actually make you better in game? Like, improve your aim, reduce the latency or whatever? Or is there like no or next to no benefit that you can actually feel compared to the good old 1k polling? Okay, let's first check if we're even getting the polling rate it says on the box. I set it to 8kHz in the utility, so let's see if that's what we're getting. Well, that's more like 6k, 6.5k, definitely not 8k. And it gets even worse when I'm moving the mouse at slower speeds. So what's going on here? Well, I've set the mouse DPI to 400, so there just aren't enough sensor updates to saturate the polling rate. At least not when I'm moving the mouse at slow speeds like this. Like, watch how fast I have to move the mouse to reach the 8000 updates per second that we want. Like, honestly, this is not easy. So at best, you're gonna get the max rate only for super fast flicks. To really make use of the polling rate, like most of the time, you have to use a much higher DPI. At 3200, this looks a lot better. Like I'm easily able to achieve 8 kilohertz. So you can actually make use of the higher polling rate, even at more modest speeds like this. Higher DPI, like 25,000 for instance, work even better, even at super slow speeds, but extreme DPI like this are super impractical to use. I mean, of course, you gotta compensate for the higher DPI by using a lower sensitivity in game. Like if you've been using, let's say, 0.8 with 400 DPI, you now gotta set it to 0.1 for the same effective sensitivity with 3200 DPI. At something like 25,000 DPI, you probably won't be even able to set an in-game sense low enough to compensate. So I'd stick to 3200 DPI for now. But even with high DPI, you're still not guaranteed to reach the max polling rate it says on the box. This mouse is supposed to hit four kilohertz with this dongle, but let's see what we're actually getting. That's more like 3.5, 3.6K. Definitely not quite 4K. I mean, <laughs> it's not bad. Could be a bit more stable, but this still is a lot more updates than we get with one kilohertz polling. However, one thing I notice is how sensitive this mouse is to the distance to the receiver. See, when I don't have it right at the edge of my mouse pad, the update rate drops even further. I'm now at 3.3K. So that's another big factor. I mean, even with a one kilohertz mouse, you should have the receiver as close as possible, but this is even more important now for higher polling rates. So yeah, I have the receiver right at the edge of my mouse pad and I'm using 3200 DPI and I have the receiver plugged in right into one of the USB ports that's handled by the CPU directly and not by the chipset. So this is pretty much the best case scenario for an eight kilohertz mouse like this Viper V3 Pro. And you would think this gets me the true eight kilohertz rate for everything. But yeah, I was a bit surprised when I tested the buttons. Turns out, yes, the sensor is running at 8K, the buttons though, I just measured two kilohertz, despite selecting the eight kilohertz setting in Razer's utility. Calling this a true 8,000 hertz polling rate is a bit of a stretch to be honest. And it gets even more strange when you set it to four kilohertz. Now the buttons are actually being pulled at four kilohertz, just like the sensor, as you would expect. I'm not quite sure what's going on in the 8K mode, but to me it seems like Razer had to reduce the scan rate for the buttons in order to get the sensor running at eight kilohertz. I think from a purely technical standpoint, it kind of makes sense to prioritize the sensor for the higher polling rate. And 8K for the sensor is what I care about the most, to be honest. But at the same time, I don't think it's fair to advertise this as true 8 kilohertz. 
But yeah, this still doesn't answer the question of whether or not high porting rates are even worth it. Like, does this mouse actually make you better in-game than a good old 1K mouse? So I've done a little experiment. If there really is a difference, then selecting 8K on the same mouse should give me better scores in AimLab than 1K, right? So I sat down, flipped the coin, tails, and I set the Viper V3 Pro to 1K, heads, and I set it to 8K, and played one round of grid shot, then flipped the coin again. About 70 rounds later, spread across multiple sessions and days, this is what my scores look like. What's actually kind of funny is that I got both my worst and my best score with 8K polling. Generally, the scores are all over the place, so let's add trend lines. And yeah, now it looks like the 8K scores actually are better than the 1K scores, which honestly came as a bit of a surprise for me. But yeah, the scores are all over the place, and a lot of the rounds I did with 1K polling actually gave me higher scores than many of the rounds I played with 8K polling. So it's kind of hard to say if the higher score average I got with 8K is just a coincidence. Maybe I just had a few good rounds with 8K that are screwing the results. Or is this genuinely thanks to the 8K polling? To answer that, I ran a so-called t-test on the data, and guess what? According to the results, we can actually be 96% sure that 8K actually improved my scores. This is not a result I did expect. Like, not at all. Mind you, we're only talking about a 1.8% higher score average, but I genuinely did not expect to measure a statistically significant improvement at all. Because, you know, actually, the rounds I played with 8K polling felt worse than the ones I played with 1K polling. You would expect 8K to feel better in-game because it's supposed to be more responsive, more accurate, whatever, but it actually felt worse. Kind of inconsistent and jittery, to be honest. And I couldn't quite wrap my head around why that is until I noticed the frame rate. I usually have almost 1000 FPS in this routine and that's pretty stable, but watch the impact the 8K polling has on the frame rate. It drops to about 600 FPS during the round. That's still plenty, don't get me wrong, but on the 480Hz OLED I've been using for this test, the FPS drop is actually kind of noticeable. But yeah, it's just mind-blowing to me that changing a single setting on the mouse can cause such a massive FPS drop. And when you check the CPU utilization, it's pretty clear what's going on here. When I don't move the mouse, the CPU sits at like 2 to 3%, but see, as soon as I start moving the mouse, the utilization jumps up to like 10%, and sometimes even higher. <laughs> that is insane. Like this is a 12 core 7900X. I can only imagine what this would do to a less powerful system. So yeah, high polling rate mice are kind of a mixed bag. It's definitely not like you could just go out by a random 8K or 4K mouse and this would instantly improve your gaming experience. It might actually make it worse. You definitely need a beefy system and get a good high polling rate mouse in the first place and one that is actually able to achieve the polling rate it claims on the box. Then get the receiver as close as possible and use a high DPI setting. And only then you might see an improvement to your aim. My grid shot scores did actually improve, mind you, not even by 2%, but hey, that's more than I expected still. Thanks for watching, bis zum nächsten Video.